In city building games, you are an omniscient god, a benevolent dictator shaping the city and the lives of its inhabitants the way you want to. Helping you with that is a huge amount of data available at your fingertips. This however gives some wrong impressions on how real life urban planners deal with data. Let's first talk about a staple of city sim games, RCI or RICO demand, which stands for residential, commercial, industry and office. You know exactly how many people want to move in, how many shops they desire, and in case of SimCity, also if you provide too many zones. Real urban planners often don't know actual demand. First, not all land is owned by the municipality, but rather by private owners, companies, the state, and so on. Second, you can't really count demand. Let's take residential demand, for example. Do you count the number of people wanting to live in your city? or the square footage they are willing to buy, or do you use even another metric? Oftentimes increases or decreases in land value over a certain time frame are used as proxy values for demand. I could name more examples of proxy data having to be used, such as monthly tickets bought instead of real-time usage of buses and trams, which leads us to another big issue, real-time data. CitySim games give us data immediately and accurate to the second. Urban planners and municipalities, however, need big administrative structures in place and also staff to generate enough data that can then be used. For example, the data I use in my PhD thesis is from 2019 and 2020, which was the latest available data. Oftentimes, you have one or two years of delay because it takes time to gather data, edit, and publish yearly reviews and yearbooks. Another issue with data and urban planning is that we have way too much of it, but way too little scientists, planners, and municipal staff to actually make use of it. There's just too much data in science. Now, while writing the script to this video, I wanted to go through the list of info views and see how realistic it would be to have real time and accurate data in each case. However, that was a little too boring, so here are just a few significant ones. Traffic view. Nowadays, monitoring congestion on a road segment is easily doable. However, data is missing in-game. Traffic view doesn't measure all traffic, but only car traffic. Pedestrian congestion because of two narrow sidewalks, for example, is not measured. Cycling traffic also not shown in this overview. What specifically do we measure with our indicators is something that we have to keep in mind. Also, do we want to measure throughput or congestion? Now before I go on to the next interview, quick reminder that you can watch this video one week in advance as a channel member and also get other cool perks. An interesting interview is education. It tracks how many people in your population have a certain education level or IRL a degree. Now what it doesn't track is how many people pass a certain level of education. This is hugely important in real life, but without a mod, City Skylines doesn't even have the option of people failing school and flunking out. That is why you have overeducated citizens after a while and your industry dies off. Now healthcare is another interesting info view. It just gives a percentage that is, as far as I know, calculated based on proximity to clinics, how much pollution and noise pollution is affecting the sim, and a few other things. But the value itself is very abstract. How would you measure health? Indicators we could use in real life are average wait times until treated, healthcare costs, number of doctors per thousand people. To my mind, the pollution info view is the worst one in the game. It only measures ground and water pollution, but exactly what is in the ground or water has huge implications in real life. Some stuff is relatively easy to get rid of and in-game pollution does wean off once you remove the polluter. But what if some industries in-game made areas so polluted that it forced you to adapt what to put there afterwards? Also, air pollution and wind is missing from the game. SimCity 2013 did that very well to my mind, but at least City Skylines has a better water flow system. Now, crime is yet another interview that just gives a single value as a percentage. A murder is, however, very different from a handbag theft. And a police station isn't just going to magically reduce crime. Statistically, it would even increase in real life because more crimes are being reported and added to the yearly reports. How would you improve data in City Skylines without the game becoming a spreadsheet simulator? Also, if you want to watch more real-life versus in-game comparisons, check out this video on the left. 
I also produce other content such as the suggested video on the right. Thanks for watching.